for criminals with a student girl kidnapped for ransom in the trunk of their car, are driving somewhere in the American countryside, but their trip is interrupted by a deer that has appeared on the road at the wrong time. Left without wheels, the kidnappers go into the woods, where they run into two harsh locals, psychopaths and cannibals, who live by the principle of good, bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Slashers are having a rough time these days. On the one hand, the genre stamped itself to death many years ago, on the other hand, the modern West is not very approving of movies, based on the abuse of weak defenseless girls. That said, the formula of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Wrong Turn, thinly working for several decades in a row, definitely in need of some changes. The creators of Butcher's Book 2 tried to stand out in a way that no one before them stood out in the genre, but let's talk about everything in order. I've already talked about director and screenwriter Adrian Langley on this channel when I reviewed one of his previous films, The Bunker. To understand how scary this man is, you need to know that for the past five years he has been making a living from two genres, horror and Christmas melodramas. Butchers, made in 2020, is one of his best-known projects, a slasher about maniacs, who turn into bloody mincemeat a company of young people who have taken a wrong turn. Butchers, Book 2, is not a sequel, but either a spin-off or a reboot of that movie. It takes the same story, moves the action from winter to summer and makes the villains not bearded brothers, but a freaky couple of chatty redneck with rotten teeth and an ugly big guy, who 99% of the time does not fit in the frame to save on makeup. Also the company of characters, who wander into their possession, is formally divided into criminals and victim, but it does not matter, because before the gun and cleaver everyone is equal. So how Butcher's Book 2 tries to stand out from the number of similar movies? Firstly, the fact that the authors show tact and sensitivity towards the female victims, all the abuse of them takes place mostly off-screen. At the same time, one of the men is castrated in a close-up. Second big distinction lies in the fact that the kidnapped girl is played by a man. No, this is not a clever plot move or a sudden twist. It's just that for some reason creators cast a male actor, Corgan Svensson, not even transgender, to play the kidnapped girl student. He spends most of his time with a bag over his head, and it's a good decision, because when that bag comes off, you won't be able to think of anything else but that the world has gone mad. Certainly, Butcher's Book 2 is a genre movie and it even has something to praise. For example, Nick Biskupek as the main psycho gives quite an interesting performance. But in general it is a secondary and cheap slasher, in which every special effect and every fake wound obviously hurt the wallet of the creators, so they are used strictly dosed. Basically, it's all understandable. If you can't make yourself known with creative findings and you have no budget, just go for something bold and stupid. After all, I'm an artist, that's how I see it. 